Well, welcome back. Today I am going to show you how to make turn this into a radio controlled model glider powered by an e-cigarette and a biro. Let's crack on. Well, welcome. Um, I, most of you might have remembered I found this uh, wedged in a hedge the other day and uh, managed to retrieve it. It was quite difficult and I could see where people are on the other go are trying to get it forward. Anyway, I'm going to convert this to radio control. Not quite sure which style I'm going to go first, but the first thing we need to do is establish the C of G on this because that is going to make um, everything that we can plan around it. There's no point in putting loads of gear in here and then finding out where them where nose heavy. So let's find out the C of G. So that gives me some datum to start putting some gear in. So one tip with these little things, don't get stick in the tailplane. Um, I think somebody's glued that. Oh no, it's just been in there a while. Don't get sticking the tailplane in this top hole. Because let me just show you, if you stick it in here, it's designed for stunts. So it's just going to go loop the loop. Right, let me show you. Look, so don't get sticking it in this top one. Look what happened. There you go. So we're looking to stick the tailplane in this bottom slot. Just be careful taking this in and out because... Uh, quite stiff and it'd be quite easy just to snap the tail off so I'm just going to pop that back in there there you go let's give it a quick chuck and see what happens hmm, it's a little bit nose down at the moment isn't it so I'll tell you what I've got I've uh, got myself a little screw there and the idea was I was going to stick it in the front stick it in the back so I can start adding some weight. So I've just literally got a self threader and I'm gonna put that on there like so. Let's just give it, so I've added a little bit of weight to the back. I think we'll call that done. <laughs> right, let me just make sure that weren't a fluke. Right. So I'm going to leave, I can't believe that's literally just stuck one of the, threaded one of those into the back. So what I'm going to do is I'm literally going to leave that as is, uh, take it back to the cabin and then what we'll do is we'll measure out, find out where the C or G is and then we can start installing our gear around that. So the idea is, is obviously when we've put the batteries and the servos in, we want that still gliding at about that angle. Right, we have established our centre of gravity. I've kept that in place. And what I want to do now is, um, obviously, I'm going to try and make this as cheaply as possible using second-hand bits and stuff you can buy really cheaply. So this is not going to be highly engineered. This is going to be highly bodged, but it's going to fly. So I've got some tape there, and I am just going to mark... The center of gravity let me show you and I'll tell you what we're going to do around this uh, these this mark right I'm just going to get that balance in actually just slightly nose heavy right now <clears throat> that's my C of G I'm just going to push gently on those two because I've got two pencils on there you see and there you go it's blimey, it's ever so far back. Crikey. Right, so let me show you. <laughs> Sorry, I'm just I'm quite shocked at how well that how well the glide was, but how far back the C of G is. So the actual cord of the wing, so that's this is the cord, is 90 millimeters, and the C of G is 50. So the centre of gravity from the leading edge to get this plane flying in a nice straight glide at the moment, that mark there is 50 millimetres. So 
Now the reason for me for getting this critical is, and I'll tell you why, what we want to do is we want to be able to position our radio controlled receiver, I'm not using this one, this is for demonstration, our battery, because look what happens, if you start putting the battery further forward of the C of G, it's going to go nose heavy. So what we want to try and do is get all our gear together and just balance up how this glider is going to um, balance. So, first thing we want to do is I'm going to take this off very gently and I'll see how it goes. And right, then I'll I have idea. managed to... <laughs> I've got to be honest with you, I was trying to balance the C of G. <laughs> I ended up with one of my batteries back here thinking to myself, this is just completely mental, how's this going to work? <coughs> when I got the uh, canopy off, now, the reason for my chortling, obviously I've got to take them out, haven't I? <laughs> and that will provide me with the weight up front. So, sensible Nick. Right, I managed to get this off by slowly working round and I didn't use it, I used a blade like so. But I worked the, not the cutting edge, but this edge, and I worked it round. But to be honest with you, if you can try, you could just slide a knife in there and just cut it straight off. The reason for me wanting to keep that is because that's got uh, a little ridge for an undercut on it, which means that clips on there. So uh, what I'd like to try and do is to keep a portion of this because that's going to be great for putting the hatch on and off. So next step is we're going to take these ball bearings out and then we're going to have a little play round with all the radio gear and I'm going to show you how I'm going to control mine. Right, so I've got my balls out of the canopy. Anybody knows me personally, that is even funnier. Right. <laughs> remember, lads, right, just for a serious note, remember, most of the people who watch these video videos are normally over the age of 45, according to YouTube. So, any changes in your habits are going to the loo, particularly having a wee. For Christ's sake, go down your doctor's, get a free fill, and get a PSA check. PSA is not guaranteed, but literally, please. If you've got any changes in your urinary habits, go and see your doctor. Right, on that happy note, we got them out. Now, <clears throat> let me tell you what we're going to actually do. I'm going to make this wing twist. So literally all we're going to do, I've got some cheap... Uh, off the internet, I think I even pipe got these off of eBay. These are three point something grams. Right, so here's a cheap servo, and I am literally just going to stick those in there like so, and then we're going to do just like my uh, Angel Wing Designs twisty. We're going to make this twisty, and there's only going to be the controls are only going to be these um, servos in the side here, which I will talk you through. Um, but basically, so they're going to control the wings left and right, down and up. So, uh, I'm going to leave the canopy now. Um, what we're going to do now is, is I have, um, I've come up with a very cunning idea. This is either going to be absolutely groundbreaking, <coughs> or um, I'm going to look, look a right burke. I haven't got any carbon tubes or anything like that. So what I'm going to do, let me just talk you through what I'm doing. God, I'm doing some waffling today. Uh, so you see these marks here? I'm literally going to cut the wing off at those points because we are going to hinge the wing. Spar, he says. Oh, yeah, don't worry. If you've got an old, don't have to worry about buying yourself expensive carbon fibre tubes or anything like that if you've got an old um, kite kicking around all I did was I got two pens the same and that's what we're using but I'm going to talk you through that process so if you're watching this video and you're thinking to yourself oh I'll tell you what we'll do 
let's find yourself two pens and you, you want to try and get them um, exactly the same mark so these are a big mediums just in case anybody's interested but you want both the same because sometimes I did do a little bit of research much to my wife's disgust um, I not much slop in that and they're pretty good so um, I might get away with one but we might use two but anyway that's the whole process so let, let, let me just show you what it is we're going to be doing right there you go that's a good quality uh, foam isn't it this stuff so that's me two wings well it's me wing cut into three bits there you go what have I done I've done it right so let's talk about the next process so obviously what we want to do is we want this hinging and this is where my uh, biros are going to come in um, because it's a fairly small model and um, we're not really going to need heavy duty sort of as a versa the twisty we don't need to go mad with this so what I'm suggesting is is that we're almost going to use about that much in each wing um, and I'm going to focus on getting this right first because once we've got this right then I know it's safe to stick the um, servos in so I've got my position marked right quick update on how it's going with the converted biros right let me just show you tell you what I have done is I've just added a bit of tape as a guide now I've got to be honest with you I have changed my thinking um, I was gonna go here which is halfway but when you look at it it's not the thickest section and the thickest part of the section so what I've done is I've actually brought mine forward and I've made mine 30 millimeters from the leading edge that's 30 millimeters from the leading edge so I'm just going to put an extra bit of tape across here and it purely you can see why that this is one of the tubes that I've got that when I put it there it's it's almost on the edges and here it gives me a little bit of a wiggle room so all I've done <clears throat> this is the tube that I'm going to use as a main spark put it in an electric drill I have literally put that on there like so Give it a nice sanded sharp edge that's popping on there like so I'm going to use this as the guide now this should be a tight fit which it is lovely so that's fitted in there like so that's one collar in I've not quite decided how I'm going to glue them in at the moment but I've got to be honest with you that is such a tight fit I might actually leave that but that's that's the process we're looking for now all I've got to do is just get the other one sorted <coughs> things are going on at great pace um, I so let me just talk you through the process I think I mean, you might have seen me I drilled these a uh, little tip drill in and then actually switch the electric drill on to reverse as well because that just helps to remove the debris and I'm just slowly going backwards and forwards really pleased with how that went now so all I've done is this is my biro let me show you that I've got the biro down at um, 35 millimeters and then all I've done is I've given them a one edge, the edge that's going in, I've just slightly given it an edge, like so. And then I, now don't just push it straight in, 
because you might there might be some debris so I've just slowly pushed mine in like so it got to about there pushed it down on the bench look at that now the other thing I'm doing is is I've made I've actually drilled the hole about that much longer um, it's about 15 mil so the actual tube the actual rod is sitting in um, a little bit of the rubber and that just takes that it just makes it quite a nice tight fit and um, you don't have to I mean that's something you'll jig around with yourself so I've got those I've got my center section. I mean I could have just glued the rod through the center section if I wanted to but um, that's not how I wanted to do it I'll push that to there onto there like so and then this is going to then going to start working like this right so there we are that's the whole wing as well, assembled we're going to push those up so they're not binding but there's the wing moving there's the wing moving now i'm now going to add this center section um, back into the fuselage but don't get gluing or sticking it at the moment because we're going to be adding some servos just about here and we're going to need to make ourselves a channel down just inside the cockpit so that the cables sorry the cables for the um, the servo wire is going to come out and then we've got to think about where we're adding the battery because remember we want to try and retain some of this because it just makes life easier you don't have to have it but I'd quite like to retain this so I'm just going to temporarily put this in place and then we're going to come up with a plan for the servos I would caution if this is something if you're not an experienced RC flyer it might be worth you going the extra weight and buying some metal geared versions I've just got these cheap kicking about so the idea is this arm you see I've got a nice long arm what I want to do is I want to sit mine uh, just here like so so that arm literally the end of this arm let me show you the end of this this end hole here I am going to put right where the leading edge is. So in other words, let me just do that like so. So in other words, we're looking for that position. And what I'm happy I'm going to do that, uh, I am going to then cut a hole um, for the servo to fit in nice and snug and then don't forget we've then got the um what the cable the servo wire is then going to feed up into here that's why i was suggesting don't get gluing all of this in yet because we've got to make some little adjustments because we want to try and make it as neat as possible and we might be able to fit these in without actually having to remove this but safer than sorry so i'm just going to set one of these up now And uh, I'll get back to you. Oh, so cutting the hole, um, you could use, um, so caution, you could use just a knife, just cut, <coughs> excuse me, <coughs> I'm still recovering from COVID from three weeks ago. <coughs> right, so you could cut a hole with a sharp knife and then sort of flick the bits out. Um, you can use a little small pointed end to a um, soldering iron. Please do it outside or make sure it's well ventilated. Or the other thing is you could use a small milling type burr and mill it out um, using a type of this type of Dremel. Right, <clears throat> I have got the servos in. It's gone very well actually. Um, I used very sharp knife now a little tip here I penciled round where the servo was going to go I used a very sharp knife but I went inside slightly the pencil line so it's a tight fit and you'll notice that all I've done is is that when I've got the servo hole in place 
I literally got myself a screwdriver and I eyeballed where I thought the cable needed to run through and just poked it straight through and then slowly opened that hole up. So let me show you what we're doing here. So um, I'm feeding that into there. Um, Right, there you go. Just be careful pulling these through that you don't strip them off. Right, there you go. And <clears throat> again, make sure you've got the cable at the front. So, nice tight fit. I mean, I'm not being funny, I could almost get away with not gluing it. I will do, I'm just going to use a little bit of hot glue, by the way. But that's what we're looking for. And then I've just got those two um, coming out. So, I've done the other one the other side as well. Literally, the only thing we have to do now, which I'll talk you through, is making two wire connectors and making the holes for a receiver battery and um, my receiver. And, um, yeah, blimey, it's only take me a little bit of an afternoon. So, let me just stick this other servo in and then uh, we'll finish off. So, I have bent up the um, push rod arms, which I'll, I'll show you in a moment. Um, because what I want to do is, before I start re sort of assembling the whole thing, we need to talk about weight and balance. Let me just show you. I've got it, I've got it balanced literally on the C of G at the moment. And let me just talk you around my thinkings. And we'll explain what we're right, doing and so how we're powering it. Basically, there's my receiver. I've got that wedged in at the moment, so that's where the cables are coming out from the servos. And this battery you can see here is an e-cigarette battery. And I'm fond of picking these up. Um, this one is three is 3.7 volts and is 550 milliamp hours. I mean it's got months of use in it so what I plan to do is remember we spoke in the past about trying to enable some of this what I'm going to do is I'm going to hollow out the front just a little bit but I think I'm going to use a soldering iron in a well ventilated area I'm going to cut this flat and I might just um, remove some of the canopy as well to get that to fit in so basically what I'm going to do is, I'm very happy with this position that we've got the C of G in. So I'm now just going to try and make as much space as I can for the receiver and the battery. But trying to retain this, it, I mean, alright I could stick a couple of magnets in but I just thought it would be quite nice. So anyway, what I might do is, is I might hollow some of this out as well. Just to give me the appropriate space because I'd like to try and keep it looking as neat. Um, the only thing is I haven't decided what I'm going to do with this, whether I'm just going to leave this or um, try and fill this with something. I'm not sure. Anyway, I'll get back to you when I've got it all um, hollowed out. Well, done. Weighing in a massive 65 grams. Let me just show you. We have, that's my wing twisting, so um, that's up, that's down. Just remember when we're doing this type of configuration that it's the reverse of what it would be on the elevator for pitch so when I push the um, stick forward to go down the wings are going up and when I push the stick back to go up the wings are um, going down and then left and right really please now let me just show you um, how I finished that front off so literally all I did was I got some medium cyano, there's some heat shrink um, tube and I cut a tiny little slot in the front and then that's my bending up just here. Uh, the working. And it just means that if you want to, you can actually, I, I'll be honest with you, I've just copied the same system that was on the um, twisty from Angel Wing Designs. Now, let me show the working end. 
I managed to get my e-cigarette battery in the front. I've got my receiver inside. I've kept this little portion here and there you go. That pops on beautifully and when I've checked the CG, I've got to be honest with you, I'm at about 45, not 50. I don't mind that so much because um, this is just, well, we'll wait and see. I might be talking rubbish. But there it is.